Hi, I'm Cody Alexander with another episode of The Art of X Show. Today, we are going to finish our coverage pod series that we've been doing this summer, going over the basics all the way from split field. And today, we're going to end with our building a cover three language. Now, remember, everything that I do kind of has a quarters focus to it. I explained in our last episode with cover three is that you have to be expensive somewhere. I happen to be expensive in quarters. Uh, Other people are expensive in cover three. I think there is a relation, especially when you tie in weak rotation with cover three and quarters, building quarters rules within your cover three to solve problems. A lot of defenses right now are trying to do that as more and more, especially at the college level and the NFL level, are playing everything from a too high static shell. Remember, a too high static shell is advantageous because it's easier to play down than it is to play back. And especially as wide cross and other forms of crossing routes and defense deep vertical shots that we're seeing now uh, within within a lot of these spread, especially with the RPOs, with thin routes, slants, glances, all of these things, it's much easier to play down on top of those and see those than it is to play from a, from a position all the way down. So a lot of these defenses are trying to build languages within their cover three structures that are going to have kind of these quarters tools built in. I'm going to go through how you can build a simple cover three language. So, uh, and two, it's interesting with, with coaching, uh, everybody ebbs and flows. Like there's, there's guys that when, when I first started writing in 2016, very, Oh, I, I'm, I really want to learn quarters. Quarters is something that we want to get into. We want to get away from cover three, the spreads kind of here. And then, you know, three years later, I didn't talk to any of those guys. Cause Hey, we're in a run heavy district or we're in a run heavy schedule or the team that we have to beat in the playoffs is, is really run heavy. And so now, Hey, we need to be more cover three or cover one oriented. Then the RPO revolution happens, right. And everybody now is RPO. And even with the wing T, their RPO and flex bone teams are RPO. And so then it was like, well, let's just play cover one. And then now we're getting back into where I'm starting to see a lot of guys come back into the quarters world. And but it's with a different perspective. You know, they've been quarters. Now we've been cover three. Now we need to find a nice mesh. And so that's kind of where I'm at today, kind of going through. So the, what I like to do is have a target indicator word. So Our two target indicator words are buzz and thumbs, right? Uh, So buzz means that the safety is going to work inside of the scene player. So typically when we get three by one, we are going to have a buzz player. So this is just simple. Now we can have weak rotation, but for right now, we're just talking a simple way of doing it. So anytime we get three by one and let's go with the typical NCAA or spread 101 offense that we see now with a tied in in a hip position and the running back away. So we have a slant set. We have two receivers and we have one receiver away. So it's a two by one, 11 personnel Y off formation. It's what, you know, everybody's running right now from the NFL all the way down to high school. So what we want to do is we want to put the safety on top of the tight end. So this is going to be our three Y coverage and the communication piece off of that. So we are going to give a buzz call. Now, like I explained in our last episode, buzz is basically force fitting bracket. Your nickel is going to be two up and out. Your field safety, well, let's just for for sense and purposes of getting this going through this, your field safety is going to be the strong hook player, which makes your mic the three up player and your will is the first to the flat or the fourth receiver. Remember, you never count the fifth receiver because that is the corners. So we are going to give a buzz call. If we get a traditional split, So the slot is on, on or outside of the hash and the tight end is hooked. We are going to go ahead and match that. So this is where you, the language comes in. We want to have a match tag or we want to have a zone it tag. So anytime we get it, we're just going to match it. So you could even install this camp rules where they don't really need to communicate match it. It's just assume we're going to play match cover three to begin. Now I get asked all the time, how can you tell the difference between rip Liz uh, match three and then cover one? And it is, it's very difficult, especially if you get vertical stemming routes, it's very difficult to, to figure out. And that's why a lot of times you, when you look at data from like true media or PFF, and you're looking at cover one data and cover three data, I like to just lump a lot of that stuff together as just like, what is middle of the field close versus what is quarters. And then cover two is generally really easy to determine. You just look at the corner. 
So we're going to always assume that we're going to match it first, just for the sake of this. Our corner is going to play mod technique on number one. We're not going to press. We're not going to bail just as a camper. We're going to play mod technique. If he goes underneath right now, we're going to let him go because he's going into his zone. Okay. The nickel again is going to be two up and out, just like you would in bracket. The only difference is now he's got to carry that thing vertical and back because he doesn't have a, a safety inside that's going to cap any kind of slant or any kind of fin or any kind of override. He's got to roll back on top of that and make sure that he understands, yes, I do have somebody closing the post, but I've got to make sure that I deliver that thing back to the mic who's now going to be who's now going to be the three up player. So the buzz safety. What exactly is he there for? As he comes down from the table or from depth, he's going to make sure that he cuts off any kind of slant, that he is going to cut off any kind of fin route, the exact same things that he's going to do from bracket, but we're force-fitting bracket. We're really just getting him down in there. The mic is not going to push with three. If three pushes to the flat, let's say we get Y cross from two and three pushes to the flat, the, the field safety is going to then push with that. He's the strong hook player. He's going to get grabbed by three if he pushes, and then the mic is going to continue to climb to work with the nickel. So that's where we're going to get that. That field safety needs to make sure that he's coughing, right, curl over flat, stay stay flat, kind of get to about six, seven yards, work vertically through that. So that way we're in the window of a dig, we're in the window of anything that might come. Like it, let's say a, a big play that I'm seeing a lot now, even at the high school level is dagger, where we're getting a dig, we're getting a vertical by number two, and then they're pushing number three to try and get you to dive down and create a whole bunch of space where that corner's now got to chase that dig. We want that safety and that strong hook to then match. Yes, we're matching the push of three, but I want to stay kind of in that that intermediate column so that with vision on the quarterback and let the ball bring me down. Again, I constantly, when I'm talking to linebackers, when I'm talking to DBs in cover two, we want the offense to throw negative routes. We want the offense to throw routes under five yards. That's what we want, okay? Not everybody's got Christian McCaffrey, right? Not everybody's got a running back that's also a receiver. Not everybody's got, especially at the lower levels, a tight end that's really a receiver. Now, at the NFL level, you have to be careful. You have to understand your matchups and what the offense is doing. But even then, they're really not trying to throw these short passes. This isn't the West Coast offense where a four-yard – flat route is considered an outside zone run right this is we are in the age of the air raid right where they're starting from the top and working to intermediate and then the last read is going to be that that dump off and then hopefully we can get a couple of yards so our buzz call is telling everybody hey we're on the safety is down which means opposite of him we have to get a cheat call so i'm really talking about early down and in early down we want to get cheat steps one of the main issues right with doing strong coverage like this especially with a running back week is what if we get speed option week we we our quarterback player is now pedaling to oblivion in the middle of the field so that's why on early downs we want to have a cheat technique if you are coming from a quarter system and you run solo or you run poach you already have this technique in it's that shuffle 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 as we as we look for the vertical of three right now now, instead of the our eyes on the vertical of three because Mike's going to take it I want to get my eyes on the mesh if I see speed option the other way I can quickly plant and drive that's why the mechanics and getting that 45 degree angle keeping your feet in the ground shuffle shuffle that hot foot shuffle right I want to shuffle 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 with my eyes in the in, on the mesh because if we do get speed option I've got to be able to plant and drive down uh, the wheel's going to take the running back I've got to be able to be that quarterback player coming from the table and hopefully I can buy the mic on the inside Hopefully I can fit on the outside and then we'll have the will on that. Now, if I am to the cheat side, okay? So this is the, this is the language mechanics. We have a buzz call. The boundary safety is going to give a cheat, 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 meaning that the will knows I'm manned up on two and the corner knows I'm manned up on one. We can do press bail. We can play lock. We can play off man. We can do whatever we want on this backside, but he is locked up. The will, if the running back is to the quads, is basically going to zone. He's going to say, if anything comes across, he's got to grab anything that comes across. Let's say they run split zone or they're in they're in a quad set uh, and they run GT. He's got to make sure, hey, I got to see anything coming back my way 
and then that's where I'm going to fit. So it's important, again, for that will to understand if we do get a quad set and the running back is set to the three by one set, that he's more of a zone player. He's going to make sure that, hey, I'm in the slant window, I'm getting a vertical hook, and I'm assisting anything that might come across. That's kind of the biggest thing that I see is when we get these quads, that will linebacker just hangs out low like around five yards and then they can then they can run y cross uh, that basically a crossing route across mike has to chase it hopefully the wheel can get there uh, so that is our buzz cheat language to three by one if we get three by one let's say we get three receivers out now we've got a trips look we want to play skinny off of this so all skinny is telling is instead of the free safety dropping down on three we're actually going to cut to two why do you do this skinny allows you to play rip liz or match three out off of three by one so all we're doing it doesn't change any of the rules for any any the nickel or the corner the corner's going to play mod on one the nickel's going to play all of two up and out the safety is now and he is now going to work to the apex of two and three the mic is going to have three up and we still have our cheap mechanics now again if we have a quad set and i i just a, a personal preference for me when i teach trips and when we go over trips i always start with quads i always start with the back because it's the hardest one to defend okay if we get the back to the week it's basically are they playing empty or is he staying in uh to to protect but when we get quads that four push that can really mess us up so if we get a four push that free safety has leveraged himself over the flat and now he can cut two to one and keep over number four whereas the mic is not going to take three and he can work he can work up with that now this is again do i want my mic as the three up player if I don't, that's when we want a weak rotation trips. So that's kind of the answer that you have to ask yourself. If we want to spin strong, skinny's great. If we want to have the mic on top of on top of number, cutting to number three and taking a vertical. If we feel like we we're getting, you know, we're getting beat with uh, we're getting beat with flood or something like that. Skinny's really good for that because now the nickel and the corner can all play just like they would on Rip Liz, or they can play like they would your match three or like we do in spe stubby special except for now the free safety is now going to take any kind of flat route or flat push by three or, or four so again we get quads the wheel's going to be the first to, to the flat well the running backs away if he pushes that way i'm going to open up and i'm going to climb vertical and then i want to make sure again i'm in the glance window i'm in the slant window i'm looking for any kind of crosser because i'm the fourth receiver back the corner again is locked. Now I grew up, I played corner my entire life uh, from high school all the way through college. And what I always, and, and again, when I, when I was coaching, what I always told that backside corner on any kind of, any kind of uh, single high coverage was you're basically in man coverage. That's your guy. Now, if he were to go all the way across and he kind of just goes across, then that's when we want to game plan it. If we get a lot of mesh routes or whatever and we get these reductions, then that's when we're going to say, hey, tube alert or hey, zone it. That's, a, that's again when we would come in and zone it. So right now what we're talking about is just match it, right? So we've got our skinny check to three by one. Now let's talk about our weak rotation. So now our weak rotation, we've got uh, 11 personnel two by two. The, the, the tight end is now into the boundary. Our boundary safety is going to, from depth, stay on top of the tight end, and he's going to have two up and out. Now, if we are worried about two push it, constantly pushing, we can give a grab me call to the will and keep him high. This is where you can build your quarters rules into your three match is that if I don't want, I don't want my safety constantly working out, right? Or I want my will to then really be the one, I, this is a decoy, I'm not really worried about it. I Or I, hey, I want my will linebacker to be in the box that they're pushing this tight end as an RPO. So this would be a great way. Like if I'm a quarters team and now I'm getting pushed like this, this would be a thumbs call. So this is why we actually tag it as thumbs. So the boundary safety is then the communication piece here is, hey, thumbs, thumbs, thumbs. The corner now, if he was pressed, would then be bail or he would be mod coverage and off because now I have a low hanging. It's almost like inverted sky over here. The wheel now knows I'm the weak hook or I'm what's called the two up player. I need to get vertical because I need 
coming in through the middle of the field because the boundary safety is taking all or two up and out. So again, you can play some of these quarters rules on top of this tight end. If you don't necessarily want him to be, uh, we don't want the boundary. I don't want, I'm, I'm worried about why cross. I want the boundary safety here. You can give a, a grab me call here and let the will handle it. Or you can do the base way of thumbs, which means that the boundary safety is going to take two and out. Now, if we get again on the cheat side, we are going to have two receivers and then the running back away. So the passing strength is actually to the cheat side. We are still going to match it. That's again, cheat automatically means man, right? So we don't need to communicate the match it piece. So if I'm cheating, let, again, let's say the tight end and, and the flanker are into the boundary. Boundary safety is going to drop down. He gives a thumbs tag. We're on the zone at side over here, right? We're on the zone side, but we're going to match it. Two up and out by the boundary safety. Will gets vertical through the weak hook. Away from it, it's going to play almost just like cover one. The nickel's going to take two up and out. And then you have Mike linebacker who's going to be attack, uh, attached to three. So if we were to get a, a, a crossing route with a push by the running back, those guys would cross like two trains in the night. They, they're they not – there is no push alert. There isn't anything like that because it's traditional split. So that's why, again, I go back to when you first start out uh, and there's that infamous line. Uh, in the Carl Scott uh, cover seven clinic that a lot of people have watched where the coach is sitting there is like in this just two man. Well, it's man with rules. So it's really man match. It's really man match cover two or man match quarters. Well, this is the same thing with match three. It, isn't this just really cover one? Not really, because you do have rules and it's even if we get tight, we can do some different zone things. People are going to play differently. It's not one rat We're we're not the mechanics are different. So, again, it's going to look like cover one. A lot of times, if everybody were to just go vertical, it's going to look like cover one. Uh, but in reality, it's not. It's going to be zone. So, again, that cheat technique means man. And then thumbs is telling that corner I'm at zone corner now and I've got a boundary safety. So we're really playing our, our three over two over here. And then we're playing man away from it. Now, let's say the running back is set to the tight end. So they have actually a formation into the boundary that we have three receivers into the boundary. Then that's when we would zone it. So any kind of stack, any kind of stack. And this is what I would encourage all coaches and then people that are trying to learn the game. Watch where the offense builds stacks and bunches because they build stacks and bunches in different ways. They want you to think that, oh, the running back's the weak. It's is really just a two by two set. Well, the tight end, the running back are now in a stack. So we need to zone that. So anytime two receivers get tight, we want to zone it. So this thumbs call, yes, the boundary safety is taking two up and out. But if the running back were to push, he would push with the new number two, and the will would now take take the the tight end this is where you can give a grab me call so hey i really don't want the will linebacker working with the vertical of the tight end i don't want him to have to worry about the tight end going vertical they've got a good tight end they like to get run these little pop passes off of play action maybe they do a lot of arc read stuff and they like to pop that pass. so what we want now is we can give a grab me call here even though we're zoning it we're going to put a quarters tag into it so here if it's like that's you could be your game plan is we really don't want the will carrying the vertical column and we don't want them manipulating that with with the running back out we can then go ahead and say hey let's give a grab me call so if the will does push uh, the running back does push to the flat the will can take them in the boundary safety can then just hinge so that way we can now have almost almost like a weak rotation uh, buzz call or a weak rotation cross call. So that's how you can then again build quarters tools into it. So camp rules, we're thumbs in this thing. We're giving a zone at tag. We're playing loose. We're letting them cross each other if they don't. If not, then, you know, the boundary safety is going to take all the two out up and out whoever that comes if the running back play actions we we play it right you know we're just going to play it like a zone uh now if again if i want to i'm i'm really worried about crosses coming from the other side that they're really trying to play action me here work, work something across get me to go i'm really picking on that will linebacker now that's when i want to get maybe give me a grab me call let the will take anything to the flat or grab him to the flat and let the boundary safety sit there almost like you're playing quarter so again it's just a tag that you can have and as i talk to 
to a lot of people that are are really getting into the rip lifts universe and playing it from too high it's how can we do this and build some quarters tools in there with with it so that we can have answers to problems because again if you're always playing everything camp rules you're going to get beat because the offense is going to figure it out so let's go over the match it versus zone it so uh, in front of me, if you if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. If not, I've got two receivers to the left. I've got one receiver to the right. It's our typical sniffer eleven personnel Y off formation. We've got a slant, so the tight end set to the two receiver side. And again, the running back can be set over here. The three, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to buzz down to the tight end. We're playing our three Y, our simple match three. So he's going to buzz and he's going to match any kind of push. So what we've got is a typical just cross right y cross like air raid y cross the slot's gonna run a deep cross the nickel's gonna take over it the will the mic is going to work a ver vertical column and hopefully he can roll over and back we can get the double on that we can have the boundary safety in the middle our corners are basically playing man coverage and our safety is pushing through to to get underneath of the curl of number one so we've got a curl and over the tight ends pushing the running backs clearing out the wheel linebacker in the, the boundary receiver, the X receiver is running a post route. So that would be typically how that would work. They're wide. They're in a traditional spot. We're going to play match it. Now let's say they want to run uh, maybe kind of some sort of a mesh concept, right? Uh, or they want to run shallow at a two back where we're going to get the dig by the X we're going to get a shallow by the slot. They reduce that now two and three are really tight. Okay. And again, all this is, this is the air raid shallow, but they're doing it from a two by one. This is kind of aching back to, I can't remember. There was a clinic and I, and the, the offensive coach was like, we ran, we ran Y cross 15 times in a row and the defense never figured it out. Never, never adjusted to it, but we dressed it up in different ways. We added a motion. We'd put it in a different formation and they just never figured out that that's what they were running. All this is is shallow. It's a mesh route and a dig you're just not getting a vertical column outside so this is how they can run it out of two by one so right here the boundary safety understands i'm we're going to type we're going to zone it now the remember the mic is your three up player so the free safety is going to take two as he goes back allowing that mic to climb the vertical hook right he needs to get vertical and this is where the match concept comes in this is this is not just a zo the zone it call is really to the nickel and the free safety the mic is always going to run that vertical column he's always going to work that will leaves he can work that now you can play this as pure zone and just really let these guys ride it in but that free safety is a better athlete i'd rather have him chasing the mesh and i'd rather have that mic who's in better leverage to cut off that dig uh so to me that's an easier way to play it and again a nickel is going to just cough he's going to work over top in case we get a curl by number one he can work underneath of that curl so again let's go from from left to right our receiver runs a vertical corner's going to take him mod coverage okay two's going to run a mesh route the free safety is going to buzz down he's going to nail down on it three is going to push the tight end he's going to push from the backfield nickel's going to buy that he's going to cough he's going to stay over it no cover zone of five yards mike is going to work vertically because he his three up there is no vertical and he has to take any vertical so because no one came vertically he can then continue to work vertically watching the quarterback the will is going to take the running back to the flat and the number one receiver on the back side the x receiver is going to run a dig and that will be cut off by the mic in the boundary corner will play chase on that because it is a vertical stem boundary safety in the middle of the field in case they want to turn this thing into a post or a post from number one so let's talk about weak rotation match it we're going to stay with y cross again because cross just tends to be the number one when they know you're running cover three they're going to run cross and they're going to manipulate it so we get a curl by number one the corner's going to nail down on it we're thumbsing it away from away from the passing strength so our nickel so number two is going to run across nickel's going to take all the two up and back and all the two out well two runs a deep cross nickel's going to nail down on that the mic will then push with number three because, again, we're they're wide, so we're matching it. And the will is going to then work vertically and help cut off that cross route as it comes back. Again, we're going thumbs because the tight end is away from the passing strength. 
Bounder safety drops down. He takes the tight end to the flat, and the corner will take the post route. Free safety works to the post. So, again, going left to right, we get a curl. Field corner nails down on it. We get our over route. Our nickel's going to take it back. We get our push by the running back. The mic is going to take it. And then our wheel is going to climb because he becomes the two up player. Right. And I, uh, I can't remember who I heard talking about that, but it just really stuck with me. It was like, you got to make sure in two by two that whoever your, whoever is the hook player to where the safety is dropping, he is really the two up player. He has to get vertical. He's the one that has to get vertical. It's not just in trips where you need that vertical help. You need it in two by two as well. He's got to get vertical. And so that would be your wheel linebacker here. Now, let's say, again, we're going to get some sort of uh, shallow concept. This time, I, I, I drew a post route. Uh, so let's say we're just getting a curl flat, but they're, they're given a mesh route, and now they're tight. So, again, we're going to get the nickel to zone over the running back to the flat. The Mike, who is going to open up, they're zoning it. So now he's going to see two. He's going to carry two back through. The wheel's going to get his vertical stem. And again, he can always nail back down once he sees there's no vertical. The boundary safeties and thumbs, he's going to take the tight end weak. And then our corners are going to nail down on number one with our free safety in the middle. So the, the most important part is once you get in the zone and match it, we're going to three Y. So we're spinning to the tight end, buzz, thumbs, whatever your language is that you want. Maybe it is just ripping Liz, whatever you, whatever you want. And then once you have that in and, and the kids are good with it, that's when you now are going to answer problems. And this is where safety spokes come in. So safety spoke for me are how can you communicate different movements? So it's the same thing with the boundary safety in your quarters is where do I need that boundary safety? So in cover three, you can have the same thing. So if we want to run three cloud, we want to go three, we want to roll three roll, however you want to call that. We call that guillotine. So guillotine means we're going to the strong side, wherever the passing strength is or wherever the field is, however we determine it, we're going guillotine, guillotine. So everybody's going to roll that way. So at all that, all we're doing now is our, our flat defender now is the corner. Our safety now is a deep third. Our boundary safety is going to be the middle third and our boundary corner is going to be the, the third to the boundary. Okay. So staying with the field safety, we're going to play swap, right? Swap just tells we're going to swap the nickel and the field safety. And that allows us then we can play different one. Maybe I want the nickel to really be close. Maybe I don't like the matchup with the nickel and the slot. I like the matchup with the, the field safety, let him swap it and come down and let that nickel then buy, buy the strong hook and be closer to the box. Buzz, obviously we talked about, he's going to work down. Now let's work to the boundary safety. There's really two things that he can do in, in two by two. And that is he can thumbs it or he can hanger it. And hanger is just guillotine, but to the boundary. So this would be three cloud to the boundary and we're just rolling to the boundary. Okay. Three by one is where you can get really funky. Okay. This is, and I think two, three by one is where you need to answer your problems. That's where you want, who do I want to be? First question needs to be, who do I want to be the, the three up player? Do I want the safety or do I want my, my linebacker? If my linebacker can run and I feel like, Hey, I don't, I'm not real worried about the number three receiver. I'm worried about number two, or I'm worried about the X. I'm not worried about, again, that three receiver or whoever they're running across. Then, then okay, now maybe my linebacker can be it. But what we don't want to get into is the infamous – Ohio State versus Alabama. Devontae Smith is running across the field. And poor old tough Borland's got to carry him because he's a three-up player. You got to have answers, right? So maybe I want to have the boundary safety in. So now we can go, uh, we can go, you know, six cross. We can sight read it, uh, meaning that if the running back pushes to the flat right now, the safety takes it. If the running back stays in the down, he becomes the cross player. Now, what what is sight? Right. Why would you do that? Why would you option that? Well, think about it. If the running back pushes to the flat right now, he's trying to buy and he's trying to buy zone low. Right. So you're probably going to get some sort of a shallow wrap. If the running back stays in the down, he's trying to buy that that linebacker and bring him down into the box so that they can run a crossing route. So you're playing the averages off of what the back does. Look, offense coordinators think they're really smart. Right. But you can kind of figure it out. If I'm pushing to the flat, I'm trying to get you to move so I can throw behind you. 
right? If I keep him in the down, I want that backer to stay low so I can throw to the, the intermediate zone behind him. I'm trying to manipulate the back, right? And you're doing this from too high, so they think you're playing quarters, right? And so that's where you, again, that's why the sight read is so good. If you're blitz in the corner, that would be a safety. Uh, so now the safety is going to take the deep third. Uh, and then you can even play this almost like a cloud tag in your cover three. Everybody's playing cover three and then your boundary safety weak rotation. Hey, I want you to actually be the third. And then I want you to beat up. I want you to beat up the X or, or I want you to play the flat because we're getting the running backs killing us to the flat away. So that way we can now build our, our cover three on, on this side. So that's another way to think about it. Skate just is kind of like thumbs. Skate and thumbs are kind of the same thing. Uh, skate, you just use in, in three by one. If you wanted to say thumbs, you can. Uh, buzz means I'm now, I'm working. It's kind of like a stab technique where I'm a safety to B gap. Like I'm working into the box. Cross is I want to stay high. Buzz means I want to get low. Okay. Um, going to the field safety. Again, we have swap. We have skinny, which we, we cover. We have guillotine, which we can, if we want to run, uh, three cloud to the trips we can and then obviously we've gone over buzz so all of these these are just different ways that you can get to different things within cover three and again you build a language and you build techniques so that you can kind of frankenstein this thing and and it gives you answers so uh you know i was talking to a, a friend of mine the other day about you know halftime adjustments everybody thinks that at the halftime you know, you go in there and uh, you're, you kind of like throw the playbook out and we're going to draw on the dirt and we're going to kind of do all that. That's not really how that works. You you see what are what are they doing in the first half? What's beating us? What do we have in our playbook that can fix that? And typically, if you have these techniques already in these words, these uses, these coverages already in, hey, we're getting killed by our three up player as the mic, they're taking advantage of it. Hey, let's start playing some cross. Hey, they're really manipulating us with the running back away from the trips. Why don't we just play some sight? Okay. Hey, we really want to get a double on the X, but we want to play some cover three. Let's play some safety, right? So you have all of these in already, and that's kind of the key that you want. So uh, thank you again for joining me on this episode of the Art of X show. That concludes our summer series of coverage, uh, finishing with cover three. Uh, I appreciate all of you. Again, make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening to. Make sure to rate the show uh, and then obviously share it out so we can grow this community. You can find everything that I've ever written on matchquarters.com. And again, make sure to subscribe to the Match Quarters Substack, get the best in defensive content every week in your inbox. Thank you for joining me again. Have a great day.